we've, um, we've uh, taken ourselves off the scene over the last couple of years intentionally so that we could reshape the shape of the notes that we're doing and reorganize our, or our business and stuff and not get too caught up in this system. You know, we set, you know we, so we've, we're rebooting the hard drive and we're up and running again, making a new album. Also, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of Vivid. Um, all the, both of these things will be happening and be, being released in, um, in 2013, starting with the 25th anniversary of Vivid that Sony's going to re-release. And that being said, we're starting off in Glasgow, Scotland on March 8th, the actual uh, tour. Mm. Um, we'll go through Europe first for, you know, just to get ourselves back in the groove. Then we come over to America and we start um, on the West Coast, right, in San Francisco our first day, which will happen at the beginning of April. And throughout the year, we'll, you know, we'll do our cycle, we'll do summer festivals in, uh, across the world and in, in, in Europe and places. Uh, we'll be going to Brazil, other destinations in South America. Uh, do the summer festivals in Europe, playing in Japan. Hopefully we'll be coming to Australia. <laughs> I'm very much so looking forward to coming there. Never played the big day out. Yeah. Other festivals like that. I can't yeah. wait to get back there. Yeah. And so it's very exciting. We're glad to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also glad to be able to uh, do what we do best, which is play music. And thanks to our fans, good fans in Australia, yeah. Uh, who have, I run across from time to time who are, who are always asking when are you guys coming to Australia to visit us so hopefully both of our dreams will come true and we'll be back in a lovely destination like Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide up in the Gold Coast, Brisbane places like that and other destinations so, and we're doing a, a studio album which we already started recording um, January, actually the 3rd of January we, hmm. we were right in the studio in New Jersey recording a song um, and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's a lot of work, a lot of activity in, in Living Color Land, and I'm very excited. Very excited. You, you said that the band was rearranging the business and also the way that you sound. Can you sort of expand on particularly that second part about changing Let's, the way you sound? And, and then we'll get you to pick a Living Color song if you like for the okay. second song. When, I'm, when I say that, I'm, like right now we've been engaging in, some, in a blues-based environment. Mm. So we're looking in exploring and doing a, let's just say a, a, I can call it blue metal <laughs> okay. spell B-L-U metal okay. and trying to expand <laughs> to something that, uh, that we've been influenced by from our early Howlin' Wolf days to uh, Robert Johnson and how that influenced folks from the UK and American bands or let's just say if I had to mm. say how they influenced let's just say Led Zeppelin or the Rolling Stones yeah, or something yeah. like that. What is Living Colors interpretation or take on that mm. from, our, from our take? And there's um, to give you a little sneak preview we did a show at the Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York last year. <laughs> if you go to YouTube you'll see a, a rendition that we did of Preaching Blues mm. um, that was done to celebrate Robert Johnson's 100th birthday celebration. So there's a little there's a little idea of what's going on there to give you a little heads up on what's coming. Okay, and worth his while, but in the early days of Hot Metal, who we were writing a story for, we interviewed Living Colour almost every month, and um, there was a lot of um, you know discussion in the interviews and also in the lyrics about um, the, you know the day-to-day -day hassles that the guys encounter just because of you know their background and and, and that prejudice was a big um, um, theme. You know, uh, in, in, on Vivid and, and subsequent records, is the is the world changed since then? The world as we look back now, is it different? I mean, are they, are they, are some are all those things still. Well, there's more people on Earth now than there were. <laughs> 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 years ago, so you do the math. Yeah. Um, you know. Yes, it has changed. I mean, we've all changed. We've all evolved. Mm. I, th my belief is with social media, the internet, you know, can counter Rupert Murdoch's networks. <laughs> the truth can be told. You can actually see a face yeah. and get some other, more information as opposed to what one source, media source, is putting out right now. Mm. I think the world is, you know, has been experiencing many different things, many, many different countries. Things have changed all over. You know, the unif you know things have changed all over. And it's been, it's been some for good, some for bad, but, there's, but it's, moving, it's moving forward like the universe and there's more people mm -hmm. that are here on this planet. Mm -hmm. That being said, there's more 
possibilities of for more madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and music calms the wild beast. Mm -hmm. If there's anything, it's like all that we have, we have our heart and our music that we can attach ourselves to. So certain bands choose to, you know, play certain things according to their lifestyle and their vibe. Living Color has always been a band that has been engaged in what's going on in life now. Mm. And, what, and, and the social things that are taking place right now. For example, when 9-11 happened in America, mm. there were a lot of bands that would not touch that subject at mm. all. Why? The sensitivity of it. You know, the patriotic scenario that was happening at that time. Mm. And um, we were one of the first bands to write a song called Flying, talking about 9-11, talking mm. about, you know, the, the reality of what was taking place at that time, you know, through the, you know, through the eyes of how we saw one person's, we saw a photo of a person jumping out the World Trade Center smiling. Yeah, yeah. And we wrote a song called Flying based on that. And at that time, nobody wanted to touch that subject. Mm. Everybody was like, you know, oh no, I don't want to be, you know. But we were, we were, we were living color. Mm. We were, you know, we we're like the news with the beat. We weren't afraid to talk about things that other people you know, gingerly, mm. went, you know, dealt with, and then maybe later on, a few months later, when the coast was clear, then you start to yeah. hear other feedback. But no, we were honest. We're always honest from the beginning. Mm. Our heart doesn't pump Kool Aid. Or let's just say, <laughs> in, 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 let's just say for all the lads in in um, in, in a lovely Australia, Lucas Aid. Lucas Aid. Now, um, we'll, we'll we'll finish up in a second, but. Uh, You've got so many opportunities. You played with the Rolling Stones, so many other people. You almost were a member of the Rolling Stones. Is is Living Colour your sort of full-on focus now? Can you see an opportunity to to do something special with Living Colour now? You said before we come on air that you're cool. The, the, well, yeah, the band's cool. You know, like it's funny. I you know when I was I was the one that introduced Mick Jagger to Living Colour, and then I ended up in the band. And then when they were looking for a bass player, I was their first call and their first choice because I already mm. worked with. Um, Ronnie and uh, you know I would work with Charlie and Nick and, uh, and, and but I was in Living Color at that time. I chose to stay with the band from the, um, from my you know uh, my integrity, and my honesty, and, and commitment that goes with um, myself first mm -hmm. has to play out for life. Mm. So I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to join the Rolling Stones, but I'm also more happy to have stayed in the band that I'm a member of mm -hmm. and. In all honesty, it was I'm very happy with how things have worked out because, you know, I'm involved. I'm a member of Living Color. Yeah, yeah. And that means a lot to me. Mm. Uh, right now, we have the opportunity of being able to move forward. And and I'm as I fast forward the tape from 1993 when that opportunity for Stones came, like in you know this fall of 1993. Here we are now, 2013, 20 mm. years later. Mm. And um, and I'm. Engaging in another living world, living color tour, yeah. and uh, Mick Jagger just recently was able to to help us celebrate that, sending some footage to, you know, help us in our journey of being able to have people recognize and know that we're still around and we're celebrating 25 years thanks to myself, you know, into helping living color before I got the band.